you know, my, my parents separated, divorced, kind of a tumultuous childhood. And so uh, we'd go to you know, midnight mass with my grandparents uh, around Christmas time every year. Uh, but then my dad, you know, came back to the Lord uh, after a long, seri- long season of backsliding and uh, brought me with, with him or invited me to go. I was a teenager at the time. So I went and sat in the very back row of uh, Hope Chapel, Hermosa Beach, California, four square church, go sister Amy. And uh, that was when I was saved. So came to the Lord, um, you know, consciously and, you know, gave my life to him. Uh, I knew nothing about, you know, denominations and theology. I just was happy to know that my sins are forgiven. And so uh, I was a basketball player, played basketball in college, uh, went to a, went to an Assemblies of God college <clears throat> on a basketball scholarship. And it was there that I uh, really disillusioned by, by all the stuff that I was seeing, um, just wasn't satisfied intellectually and spiritually, emotionally with the kind of Christianity that, uh, that I knew, which was, you know, Calvary Chapel, Foursquare, AG, you know, various kinds of non-denom, Vineyard, all the, all the fun SoCal uh, alphabet soup. And so I started asking questions uh, in a class from uh, a theology professor, a required theology class. And so he would, he literally just took me to his office after class every day and would say, you know, you have some great questions. They've already been answered. Uh, here, take this book off my shelf by Martin Luther, his commentary on Galatians. Uh, I'd come back and say, I read that. What do I do next? Okay. Uh, you ever heard of this guy named Louis Burkhoff? No, never heard of him. You know, read this, you know, boom, read, read that, read that Calvin, uh, Spurgeon, Edwards, Owen, like all the, all the, all the names that people would recognize. And so that's how I became uh, more and more, Reformational, I would say. I was a youth pastor in the in the, in, the, in the AG at the time, so you know, wasn't allowed to be a Calvinist, but uh, I was becoming more and more understanding of that. And uh, graduated, figured out what I was going to do with my life. Um, my choices were to go to Fuller Seminary, which was where all the religion students went to, the Bible students. But this professor said, "You don't want to go to you don't want to go to Fuller. You want to go to Westminster." And so. Uh, never heard of Westminster, um, never heard of Escondido, California, drove all the way down, uh, found a, a apartment to live in, had a roommate, this Dutch guy, never met a Dutch guy my entire life. Um, Sunday comes and goes. I went to like kind of like the charismatic, uh, I don't call it the charismatic, but went to kind of like the evangelical-ish PCA uh, in town. And uh, Sunday night rolls around and my roommate's like, hey, I'm getting ready for church. You come in? I'm like, who goes to church Sunday nights? <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of football game, you know, he's like, oh, we're Dutch reformed. We go to church twice on Sunday. It's like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. All right, I'll go with you. So I went uh, to the Escondido Christian Reformed Church, now the United Reformed Church. And uh, the pastor was preaching through Romans chapter nine. Uh, just blew my socks off. Uh, the singing uh, just right from the hymnal, Psalms, hymns, uh, the reverence, the, the typical Dutch, you know, if anyone out there has gone to a, like an old school Dutch reformed church, like just the typical sobriety of it all. It was so different for me. Um, and yeah, so that, that's like, that was my introduction to like real reformed church, um, reformation church. 